I'm Spencer. I'm so trash. And this is the it. <laughs> and we're here to do a long discussion topic. Yes. Yeah. This will be a, one of our longer videos. A little so. bit more educated. Yeah. <laughs> So, we're going to talk to you about AAA games today. What? What is a AAA? Uh, well, that's a good question. I think it depends on who you ask. Oh, snap. What do you think a AAA game is? Well, since you're asking me. <laughs> AAA, okay. Without thinking of the definition term, AAA to me defines a game that exemplifies what a game of that genre should be. Let's look at your, you know, your Gears of Wars. The first Gears of War. <laughs> your Halos. Okay, departing from shooters, going to say RPGs, your Kingdom Hearts. Oh, your you know, Final Fantasy Seven. Oh, you know what I'm saying? You know, you throw out a little bit of that. You know, going to your platformers, your Mario's. You know what I'm saying? Get your your Mario Sunshine going, your Galaxy. You know, your Legend of Zelda. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it goes, it goes like that pretty much. So, like games that are more uh, trendsetters. Uh, yes, trendsetters. Things that are more well known. Resident Evil Four. Mm. Bam. You know, over the shoulder may not have been invented by them. Coming from the consumer perspective, I always consider AAA to be any game that was released by a publisher that's pretty big. well known. Like a like if EA releases a game and it's like a lot of hype behind it. Hey, it's another Madden. That's yeah. AAA game. <laughs> hey, AAA. But then again, you got that hard line, and you, they've been doing work. I'll give it to them. Ubisoft releases an Assassin's Creed, and everyone triple, cries. That's a AAA <laughs> game. Every, uh, they release Watch Dogs as a AAA game. Whatever, whatever. I've always considered AAA to be a game that has a huge budget uh, that that comes out and is expected to make a lot of money. Yeah, expect to just blow people away. Yeah, be like, damn, can you believe all this shit through your cell phone? And then reality sets in. Yeah. So is that what AAA really is? No, it's not. In fact, what is the actual definition of what AAA? actually means. Well, the SIRS at the edge did a little bit of uh, research. He came to the conclusion uh, based on the information that was presented to us. Yes, he is tied down. Uh, AAA follows under three categories, thus the three A's. Right. What are those three categories? Uh, innovation, uh, what's the other one? Profitability, mm -hmm. and quality. Okay, so innovation, profitability, and quality. So a game has to meet... Or pick. Profitability, <laughs> innovation, quality. That's how I remember it. <laughs> so did this game pique your interest? Oh, God. Went there. So the <laughs> so game has to meet all three of those criteria in order to be considered AAA. Yes. Interesting, yeah. because that's definitely not what we're told. We can definitely, yeah, we can definitely throw away the facade of a lot of games in that fact. You know, the order. <clears throat> uh, other games. <laughs> and where did, this, where did this term come from? What? AAA. AAA. Um, well, honestly, it, it was it was something that used to define. Yeah, I feel it. Uh, that used to define games that were actually of high quality, higher budget, and higher expectations. Yeah, and th this term actually came from inside the industry. Yeah, as as a term to look at games after they were released yeah. to see if it was profitable and it was a good way to move forward. To be like, yeah, man, this this game for sure is going to knock it out of the park. Yeah. Okay, this isn't like fucking, I don't know, like Gauntlet Legends, no offense to Gauntlet fans, but it's something that's going to be like, you know, instead of just meeting the criteria, it exceeds. Yeah. It does something you haven't seen before. It's it's your eh, Crash Bandicoot. So what do you think are some good examples of AAA games? Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Resident Evil 4. Um, you have, uh, I would say, you know, I'd count Bayonetta. I okay. would. I mean, for what it for what it's done, yeah. I don't, don't know. The, I don't know the profitability of it. I think it sold very well, even I, being on the Wii U. That might take a little bit more time for me. To it might take a little bit more time, which we'll get into. Yeah. Um. You know, you got Grand Theft Auto Five. Two billion dollars in sales. I think they've got a pretty strong argument. That I think. Well, well let's explain. Let's explain a little bit deeper. It has to meet the three criteria, right? Yes. So, it, it, profitability guaranteed. Yes. Yes. Quality. That's. I think across the board, people can admit that Grand Theft Auto Five is a quality game. Especially back then, on the PS3 and Xbox 360, given with what they had, I mean, everyone's waiting for a PC release, but you fail to see what they did before that. Yeah. In a previous. It is very good game. Very. Good. Uh, and then innovation. I think there's tons of innovation in there. Yeah. Got innovation doesn't game. have to be we. And getting a remote and doing all this interesting stuff like that. I mean, Connect, that is Star Wars. That's innovation, sure. But innovation can still be within its own bubble. Grand Theft Auto Five did amazing things. It, it introduced the three character system that it has. Yeah. It introduced uh, 
you know, interesting story that was woven between the three, which mm-hmm. I liked. Yeah, and they have the the use of social media. What are some other games that actually did all three? Um, like I said, you know, Gears of War. I would say I was very profitable. Uh, for its time, it was very different on what it did. Oh, it's, yeah, its it, engine it was, was crazy different. Yeah, it was super uh, interesting to play. It's just a shooter in general. Yeah. Like, I couldn't stop playing it. I was playing it with with, uh, with my brother, and I was just, like, blown away. I was like, oh, crap, I'm Carmine. I just died. You know, but this is great. Yeah. Um, well, I'm not Carmine. But you get the point. Um, there's plenty of things um, that that a lot of those games do. Like, you can really see. It's it's usually, like you said, the trendsetters that you can usually see, and you can be like, oh, they really, that franchise happened because that one game was that good. You know, look at Bioshock. That franchise essentially grew because Bioshock had such a good formula, and they knew how to execute it. Yeah, and Bioshock was profitable. Yes. It was very innovative with its... Kind of use of psychology in game. Oh, dude, was really, it was great. Really clever. Really hadn't been done so much. Before. Worked in the story. They kind of swept the rug right underneath you. Yeah. At the end, you're like, wait, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> but and then and then obviously quality. It's very very good game. Exactly. Everything's everything's there. So I think the quality part they take into like a Metacritic kind of approach of just did the critics like it? Yeah. Yada yada. Did it get so and so? And and developers have been using that for years as. A way to give like bonuses to everything and stuff like that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's it's kind of weird how it happened, um, but that's a different topic. <laughs> but um, but yeah, uh, and, and you can go all the way back to Mario. Yes, Mario three. I mean, the first Mario absolutely saved. Yes. You know, did a lot to improve <laughs> video gaming at first time. I imagine that. might have say it saved it. <laughs> Mario 3, I think, was one of the highest selling games, at least a couple years back. It was one of the higher selling games of all time. Yeah. Many uh, moons. If you, if you consider all the different iterations of it. Many moons. Many moons ago. But, but that game is very innovative. I would say AAA status. Yeah. These kinds of games have to fit that criteria. And that's kind of where we're coming at here and now. Uh, a lot of games, there's kind of that misconception going in that these games are AAA when. They don't fit all the criteria, or they don't fit one, a single one. Uh, I think a good example, unfortunately I have to say this, because I wanted to like the game, was The Order. And I know I'm bashing it a lot. Hey, sue me. I'm sorry. It just wasn't what I was expecting. Well, let's see. Let's, let's take a, a backseat to it. When The Order was coming out, how is it marketed? It was marketed as Sony's baby. This is the AAA game from Sony, Ready at Dawn, is that who made it? Ready at Dawn. This is their their first uh, AAA game coming out. Well, I mean, they did do God of War, and I would say those PSP, PS Vita um, ones. Yeah, sure. Yeah, those are AAA. And I think they did um, one on Ascension. I think they did Ascension. I could be wrong. I'll have to double check that. But regardless, you know, they had all these ideas for, uh, for the game and whatnot, and they really wanted to provide that cinematic experience. Well, it was unfortunate as you progress and you start to play the story and things like that. The quality really showed. Graphically, great. Everywhere else. I mean, um, voice acting was great and all that other stuff. But you just really started to feel it was not that good of a game. So it hit, it has three criteria to hit to be AAA. Yeah. It has to be profitable. Which, we'll see. As, it, well, it I mean, be. as far as we know, it sold better than we expected. But that doesn't mean it sold good. Yeah, it could have it hit sales expectations. So, with the hype they put behind it, I would be surprised if it yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, quality, which you're saying maybe not quite up to par. Definitely not. And then innovation. Didn't do anything differently. Besides the cinematic experiences. Unless your innovation is short gameplay. <laughs> with short run quick time. time events. Yeah. You're not doing anything that anyone hasn't already done. And worst of all, you're not perfecting. I think it, I think being the originator is very hard to do. Being the perfecter is much easier when you consider what you're working with and consider, hey, we have this idea. How do we improve it? That's, you know, like uh, Resident Evil yeah. 4. If you look back on that, they really defined that over-the-shoulder that all third-person games use now because of them. Grand Theft Auto uses it. Here's a War uses it. Come on. It's definitely something. Yeah, absolutely. Rogue Warrior uses it over the when you're behind cover. <laughs> Holy shit, I just found <laughs> <Right. laughs> right. And I think all this kind of brings us to the final point of why is there a misconception of what AAA means? 
Well, it's a marketing term. It's uh, it's a no. I wouldn't say it's a trick because they're not forcing you to do it, but they are leading you to believe something. So yeah, it's sort of. It's a, it can be a bait and switch sometimes, a la the order. But the thing is, is it's been the the term has been so um, I guess perverted. I guess you can say over the course of gaming to where now it's used to just refer to anything. Like, and now now we say something's triple A before it's come out. Yeah. We can't measure quality before a game has come out. You can't. Even a demo for Final Fantasy fifteen, be sure to watch it and listen to this um, <laughs> That game, for instance, you still can't measure the quality even off of that. You know, I remember I played uh the demo for uh Dragon's Dogma. Mm -hmm. It's a Capcom game. Uh, and I was like, oh, you know, it's all right. I'll give it a shot. Right? It looks pretty fun. Played the game. Fell in fucking love. That game is great. I love that game. I would never have gotten that experience from just playing the demo. The demo's all right. But you know what? Until the game comes out, you cannot determine that. So why? So so people, so companies are just slapping AAA on a game before it comes out and using it as a marketing tool. So gamers should really think twice about when when they see the review or when they see a game like ooh Bloodborne it's the next triple A game from From Software hey it very well could be i don't doubt it yeah but it's not a triple A game mm -hmm. until it comes out until it comes out its quality is tested is it innovative and does it do you know the well at this point the franchise justice by selling well which in my opinion it will even as a PS4 I got yeah, this. I mean, and then there's, and obviously, when they do this, it leads to a lot of disappointment, which I think is one of the big problems. Is yes. that they do that whole thing, they set and then, themselves up for failure, and you get like Watch Dogs is like the biggest triple A of the year. It's going to be huge. Yeah, and of course, no. <laughs> and and I've actually seen this on on before we actually got started on this about people who have have been like, oh, the top ten triple A flops. It's not triple A, but flops. Yeah, it just it's is literally not. by definition not triple A. And this isn't our definition, keep this in mind. This is, yeah. this is from the internet. A very reliable source. <laughs> <laughs> we found this on a website. A website. <laughs> but no, definitely something to think about. Don't always label everything as AAA beforehand. Yes. yes. Always be skeptical about any game that comes out. Is it going to be profitable or whatever? It's good to, to, to wish the best on a game. Like, I wish the best on Bloodborne. But I'm skeptical, too. Because I'm like, hey, they struck under... Eh, I wouldn't call Dark Souls 2 Thunder, or Lightning. Uh, I'd call Demon Souls and Dark Souls um, Lightning. So they struck twice. Might have missed their mark, but I think they're about to strike back again. Could be. Only time will tell, though. Yes, and we'll be streaming. <laughs> <laughs> but that's enough for self-advertising. <laughs> I'm Spencer. And I'm Jai Day. And this is The Itch. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We do new videos every week. Make sure to catch us on Twitch. <laughs> this is The Edge. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Get out of here. See ya. <laughs>